Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. If you're a regular viewer of our Crimes of the Week International series, you might remember that back in October, we put together a compilation list of some of the dumbest criminals in crime stories we'd covered so far this year. At the time, we asked you if you wanted us to make another round of these videos covering the second half of the year, and the response was overwhelmingly positive. So here we are, as promised, with the dumbest international criminals July to December of 2021, just in time for the end of the year. One thing to keep in mind is that these segments have not been edited since they appeared in their respective lists, so references to specific days of the week as well as other small details may no longer apply. That being said, we hope you enjoy this compilation as much as we enjoyed putting it together. And thanks so much for a great year, everybody. With that out of the way, let's get to the video. Authorities in Japan's Ibaraki Prefecture say that a 53-year-old woman has been arrested this week after she allegedly attempted to extinguish the Olympic flame with a water gun during a portion of the torch relay. According to reports, Kayoko Takayashi sprayed the flame and torchbearer at approximately 7.30 p.m. on Sunday as the Olympic relay began its Ibaraki route leg through Sinba Park. As she did so, she could be heard yelling, No Olympics! and Stop the Games! Though it has not yet been confirmed whether the substance in the pistol was merely water or some other liquid, it appears that neither the torch nor the runner were harmed. A member of the security team quickly stepped in to shield them from the spray, while another detained Takayashi until police could arrive and place her under arrest. The runner completed his route as planned. Two accused robbery suspects made their first appearance in court this week, just days after they were caught because one of them left their cell phone at the scene of the crime. According to reports, 32-year-old Lincoln Nyakatira and 21-year-old Godfrey Mudzengarere began their scheme by calling their intended victim and pretending to be representatives of the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority. They then arranged a meeting at a local depot on July 10th, where they told the victim they could help her buy discounted boxes of cooking oil. When the victim arrived, one of the suspects got into her vehicle, under the pretense of waiting for papers for the cooking oil sale. At the same time, the other suspect snuck around the side of the vehicle, ambushing the victim and tying her up before she could respond. The two men demanded money and made off with roughly $6,000 US. Luckily for the victim, at some point during the crime, one of the suspects dropped his cell phone underneath one of her vehicle's car seats. The phone was used to track the accused robbers down, and just over half of the stolen money was safely recovered. Nyakatira and Mudzen Garere remain in custody after their court hearing this week, and it appears that neither one has yet applied for bail. This week, Japanese media announced a novel arrest after a man was taken into custody for a crime that many have jokingly referred to as drinking and droning. According to reports, the incident took place last month in the city of Toyota, and began when a 56-year-old man had eight cans of beer between 7 a.m. and noon. At some point during the consumption of the alcohol, the man became motivated to clean his house, but the project was quickly abandoned after he stumbled across a remote-controlled drone that he had purchased several years earlier and forgotten about. Deciding that this was as good a time as any, he took the drone out of its box to see if it still worked, and began to fly it around his neighborhood. However, the fun quickly ended after his less-than-careful piloting sent the tiny aircraft crashing through his neighbor's window. Police were called to the scene, and the man was taken into custody. He now faces charges for flying his drone while intoxicated. The arrest is apparently the first of its kind to take place in Aichi Prefecture. It follows amendments to Japan's Civil Aeronautics Act that were made just this year to include a number of provisions specifically governing the use of drones. Authorities in Delhi's Shadara district say that they were given a bizarre excuse this week after they arrested a suspect for the theft of a woman's earrings. The 31-year-old man told them that he had committed the crime to get money so that he could throw himself a birthday party. The crime was reported last Friday, 
when a man riding on a motorcycle snatched a woman's gold earrings in the district's Mansarovar Park area. A search of surrounding CCTV footage revealed that the suspect was wearing a mask and that the bike he was riding did not have license plates. However, the motorcycle was distinct enough and there was good enough video footage that police were soon able to track down both the vehicle and its owner. It was then that they arrested Mohit Gotam, a junior engineer who is also a resident of Shadara. During his interrogation, he confessed to committing the theft, telling investigators that he was running out of money and he wanted to make sure he would have enough to cover his upcoming birthday celebrations. Gotam sold the earrings to a local goldsmith who at the time of this recording is reportedly on the run. Authorities in Hong Kong say that they have arrested two men this week after they were captured on video standing outside of a woman's apartment and sniffing her shoes. According to reports, the incidents took place outside the unit where the 27-year-old woman lives with her mother and sister, on the 21st floor of the Prosperland House skyscraper in the satellite town of Tuen Mun. The woman first became aware of the bizarre situation a little more than a month ago when a neighbor approached her and told her that he had captured something strange on the surveillance camera outside of his apartment. The neighbor said that he had seen a man standing outside of her door who proceeded to pick up one of her running shoes and sniff it. The woman was concerned enough that she installed a surveillance camera of her own. Over the next couple of weeks, she managed to capture not one but two men doing the same thing, both of whom allegedly returned several times to smell different pairs of her shoes. The footage was turned over to Hong Kong police who conducted an investigation and found that the men in question also lived in the building. The 30-year-old and 31-year-old suspects have not been named at the time of this recording, but strangely it is believed that neither of them knew each other or the 27-year-old woman. They were both arrested earlier this week on suspicion of loitering. In Hong Kong, loitering was reportedly punishable by up to two years in jail. Tokyo Metropolitan Police say that a 20-year-old man is in custody this week after he and an accomplice allegedly tried to carry out a telephone scam but were outwitted by their elderly target. The incident reportedly began on the afternoon of August 12th when Toshihiko Nishibayashi and a friend phoned their would-be victim, identified only as a woman in her 70s. The pair of scammers attempted to pose as the woman's son, saying that they needed money. However, unbeknownst to the suspects, the elderly woman had previously been advised by her family about what to do if she received a suspicious phone call. Rather than simply hanging up on them or telling them that she knew what was going on, she laid a trap for the scammers. She confirmed that the caller was not her son by deliberately referring to him by her husband's name to see if he would react. When the suspects did not correct her, she knew for certain that it was a scam. When Nishibayashi said that he would come to the woman's home and pick up the money on her son's behalf, she played along and agreed. Then when the call was over, she called the police. By the time Nishibayashi arrived at the woman's home to collect the money, the cops were waiting for him and he was arrested. According to police, he has since confessed to the scam and claimed that he did it because he didn't have any money. At the time of this recording, it's unclear whether his accomplice has also been arrested. A recent high-speed vehicle chase in the city of Birmingham, England made headlines this week after court records revealed the equally bizarre and amusing reason it allegedly took place. According to reports, 25-year-old Zach Palmer claimed that when he led police on a 90-mile-per-hour chase across the city at the end of June, it was because he forgot that he had actually passed his driving test. The explanation is apparently rooted in Palmer's former life as a criminal. He previously served two years in jail for helping a killer evade police by supplying him with cash and SIM cards, but has since turned his life around. He said that when he saw the police trying to pull him over for a routine traffic stop in June, he panicked, forgetting that he wasn't actually doing anything wrong, and instinctively tried to escape. When police finally did pull him over, they found out that Palmer was fully licensed and insured to drive, and hadn't actually broken any laws until he tried to escape. Though the judge in the case cautioned Palmer about his dangerous actions, he ultimately said that he believed that he was trying to turn his life around and handed him a 12-month suspended sentence. However, it looks like Palmer won't be heading back out on the roads just yet since he was banned from driving for two years. Authorities in northern France say that three police officers are in custody this week after they fled the scene of a vehicle collision caused by playing with a taser. 
The bizarre incident took place on August 28th after six officers had finished their shifts and were traveling together in a police vehicle towards the city of Robay, near the French border with Belgium. The colleagues were supposedly in good spirits and by their own admission were acting like idiots. However, one of them decided to take things a bit too far. Things got out of hand when a female officer sitting in the passenger seat fired her taser in the direction of the driver. After being struck, the driver lost control of the vehicle, causing him to hit a parked car. Though thankfully there were no injuries as a result of the collision, the officers decided to flee the scene of the accident rather than wait around and try to explain what had happened. Unfortunately for them, they were spotted by a nearby resident who reported the crash. Three of the six people involved in the bizarre incident have now been arrested and charged. Though none of them have been identified by name, we know that two of the officers have been charged with hit and run and aiding and abetting a hit and run. The female officer who accidentally fired the taser has been charged with intentional violence with a weapon and endangering the lives of others. In an attempt to explain the woman's actions, her lawyer said that she was just trying to give the driver a light taser, though we're not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. The three police officers are due to appear in court on February 3rd. Authorities in the Japanese city of Sapporo say that a 41-year-old man is facing charges this week after he allegedly carried out a rather absurd robbery attempt at a local convenience store. According to reports, the incident took place at approximately 3.30 p.m. on August 21st at a store in the city's Kyoto Ward. That's when Tomoharu Nakamura entered the business armed with a small disposable cigarette lighter and began attempting to threaten the manager with it allegedly shouting, Out with the money, or I'll light you up. Not remotely intimidated by Nakamura or his lighter, the manager went into the back room of the convenience store and called police. At the same time, the shop's numerous customers took their opportunity to leave, apparently deciding that they didn't need to see how this was going to play out. When police arrived at the scene, Nakamura likewise threatened them with his lighter. However, they were also not intimidated and were quickly able to make an arrest. Once in custody, Nakamura admitted to trying to rob the business and was charged with offenses related to the robbery as well as assaulting a police officer and obstructing police business. Japanese commenters appeared to be equally baffled and amused after reading reports about the bizarre robbery, with some joking that the manager should have simply blown out the lighter's flame when Nakamura threatened him. Others wondered whether he might have been a seasoned bank robber who simply wanted to challenge himself. Either way, according to reports, Nakamura could be looking at some serious jail time for the strange crime. Authorities in South Australia say that three people are in custody this week after they were allegedly caught trying to smuggle drugs onto the grounds of a prison in a rather uncommon way. According to reports, at approximately 5.30 p.m. on September 6th, police in the town of Stirling North received a call about suspicious behavior near the Port Augusta prison. Staff at the prison observed a man get out of a gray Mazda sedan that had been driven to the back of the facility, after which he tried to use a bow and arrow to launch a mysterious package inside. When police arrived on the scene, the 32-year-old suspect tried to run away but was arrested nearby. His two alleged accomplices, a 31-year-old woman and a 35-year-old man, were able to take off in the car that they had arrived in, but were soon tracked down and were also arrested. All three of the suspects have since been charged with introducing contraband into a correctional facility. While authorities haven't officially confirmed what the contraband was, most reports state that it was likely drugs. This is backed up by the fact that police took the package away for forensic testing. Reports also state that if convicted, the three suspects could be looking at a maximum penalty of up to 10 years in prison. Authorities in Western Germany say that a 23-year-old drug dealer has been arrested this week after he accidentally fell asleep on his phone and called the police. According to reports, the incident began around 1 a.m. on September 4th, when emergency dispatchers received a series of strange calls. Each time, they heard groaning and snoring sounds on the other end, but weren't able to get a response from the caller. 
Unable to rule out an emergency, dispatchers traced the call to an apartment in the town of Val de Brule, roughly 30 miles east of Cologne, and sent police to the residence. When police arrived at the scene, they were greeted by an extremely confused 21-year-old, as well as the odor of marijuana. They soon realized the source of the call. The 21-year-old's 23-year-old roommate, who was asleep on the couch and had been inadvertently pocket-dialing authorities. When the 23-year-old was woken up, he was just as confused as his roommate. That was until he checked his call history and confirmed the pocket dialing. A search of the apartment revealed a sizable amount of marijuana, as well as ecstasy tablets, cocaine, amphetamines, scales, and cash. The two roommates were arrested and are awaiting charges pending further investigation. According to reports, this is not the first time they have been arrested for dealing drugs. Authorities in the Thai province of Patum Thani say that a man has been arrested this week after he allegedly set fire to a residential building for no apparent reason. The disturbing crime took place at approximately 2 a.m. on September 18th, when the unknown man ignited a shoe rack on the building's ground floor in the Lamlukka district. The fire quickly expanded to a wooden panel in the room before also spreading to nearby buildings. Bizarrely, instead of fleeing the scene, the suspect stayed around to admire his work, reportedly laughing and smiling as the fire escalated. Thankfully, nearby residents were quickly warned about the blaze and were able to escape without injuries. Emergency service workers also arrived quickly and were able to extinguish the fire before it got out of hand. Following the suspect's arrest, he was questioned in Thai, but gave no response. Authorities tried again in English, but only managed to get a few words out of him, none of which offered any explanation for the man's actions. Authorities believe that the man could be a foreigner, be suffering from mental illness, or both. The suspect remains in police custody. Authorities in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais say that a woman is in custody this week after she allegedly sent a box of poisoned chocolates and candies to her ex-boyfriend and his fiance. According to reports, the box of tainted sweets was delivered to 35-year-old Dion Carino and 27-year-old Amanda Cassia Lopez on Thursday, September 23rd, at their home in the city of Jaiba. Because the couple was set to be married that weekend, they thought nothing of it, and soon began eating and sharing the treats assuming that they were simply an early wedding present. However, shortly after consuming the box of candy and chocolate, it was clear that something was wrong, as everyone who ate from the box began to fall seriously ill. In addition to the bride and groom-to-be, three other family members, including a two-year-old child, needed to be hospitalized. Thankfully, all of them survived. However, sadly, the family dog, who was also given a little bit of the candy, later died. After speaking with the victims and other family members, it didn't take long for investigators to come up with a suspect, the groom's ex-girlfriend. She was reportedly never able to accept that the relationship was over or that her former boyfriend had found love with someone else. Though no additional information has been released about the woman, reports say that she was arrested at her home the day after the suspected poisoning incident and remains in police custody. At the current time, authorities are reviewing surveillance footage in the area, have conducted a search of the woman's house, and are still trying to determine what poison was used in the alleged attack. The situation remains under investigation. Authorities in southern Wales say that a 37-year-old man is facing an additional penalty this week after he attempted to arrest the judge in his case during an assault trial. According to reports, Daniel Hughes was on trial with the Swansea Magistrates Court for allegedly assaulting a council enforcement officer outside of his home in Port Talbot back in July. When the officer tried to put a clamp on Hughes's vehicle, he reportedly responded by threatening him, damaging the officer's car, and then grabbing him by the neck. Obviously feeling that he wasn't in enough trouble already, when the court proceedings began this week, Hughes decided to up the ante 
making his way across the room and climbing the desk of Judge Neil Thomas to try and perform a citizen's arrest. During the bizarre incident, Hughes claimed that he did not recognize the judge's authority. Hughes was eventually wrestled to the ground by security guards and escorted out of the courtroom, and later refused to return for the trial. The proceedings went on in his absence and ended with him unsurprisingly being convicted of the crime. Though his sentencing for the assault conviction isn't due to take place until next week, in the meantime, he has been given an additional 28 days for contempt of court. A disgruntled golfer was reportedly sentenced to three months in prison this week, as well as ordered to pay thousands in restitution after he was caught pouring weed killer on a green at his former golf club. According to reports, 55-year-old Glenn Newton was a member of the Woolley Park Golf Club in Wakefield, West Yorkshire, for several years, until his membership was terminated by the club's owners in 2020. Prior to being kicked out of the club, Newton had a reputation as an extremely difficult personality around the club, repeatedly earning the ire of his fellow members and the club owners for his treatment of staff, as well as other undisclosed incidents. Apparently more than willing to live up to this reputation, upon being kicked out of the golf club, Newton decided he needed revenge. In April of this year, under the cover of darkness, he put on a balaclava and headed out onto the green of the third hole of the course, where he proceeded to douse as much of the area as he could with weed killer. Unfortunately for Newton, he was spotted by the groundskeeper, who immediately jumped into his vehicle and began driving towards him. Newton attempted to run, but ended up slipping right into the path of the groundskeeper and getting hit. Though it appears that Newton was not injured as a result of the collision, it did give the groundskeeper enough time to pull out his phone and start filming, as well as grab a hold of Newton's balaclava and pull it off. Newton was later arrested and recently pled guilty to causing criminal damage. This week, he was sentenced to three months in jail, suspended for 12 months, and was ordered to pay £10,000, or roughly $13,500, in restitution. However, the golf club estimated the damage to be much higher, saying that they felt Newton owed them closer to £16,000. A worker at a high-rise condominium in Thailand reportedly got the scare of his life this week when someone allegedly cut the safety rope of his climbing equipment while he was suspended more than two dozen stories in the air. According to reports, the incident took place around noon on October 12th at the 32-story Lumpini condo building in Nontaburi. It began when the man, who has been identified only as a Burmese national named Song, descended from the top of the high-rise with two other workers to fix a crack on the building's exterior. However, around the 30th floor, Song started to feel something strange. The rope was getting heavier. It was at this point that he looked down, only to watch in terror as a pair of hands reached out and cut his safety rope from beneath him. He was now left dangling in the air, with no way to get down. Terrified, Song began to knock on windows, trying to alert residents of the building that he needed help. Thankfully, he was eventually able to grab onto the balcony of the 26th floor, whose occupants helped him to crawl over and inside. Though no stranger to working at great heights, Song was reportedly shaking by the time he made it to safety. Based on statements he was able to give to police, as well as those from other witnesses, authorities were able to zero in on a suspect, a 34-year-old woman who is said to live on the 21st floor. Police say that they are currently trying to link her to the crime using DNA evidence, but that they are confident they already have more than enough to charge her with criminal damage, as well as attempted murder. At this time, no explanation has been given as to why the woman allegedly committed the crime, but authorities say that it was definitely done intentionally. All residents of the building were provided with plenty of advance notice that work was being done, so the presence of ropes and workers could not have been a surprise. Representatives from the Thames Valley Police say that a 39-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of numerous offenses this week after he allegedly caused serious damage to another man's vehicle and home using a forklift. 
According to reports, police were alerted to the incident at approximately 8.35 on October 23rd when they received calls from members of the public telling them that a man had been seen engaging in dangerous activity with a JCB forklift in the hamlet of Studley Green. The 39-year-old suspect allegedly used the forklift to pick up a parked 4x4 vehicle and then had proceeded to ram it into the side of a nearby house. Understandably, the bizarre crime caused serious damage to both the vehicle and the house, though thankfully no one inside was injured. Both the car and house belonged to the same victim. By the time police arrived at the scene, the suspect had fled in the forklift. He was quickly tracked down and after a short pursuit was arrested on nearby Oak Ridge Road. According to police, numerous additional cars were damaged during the chase. The 39-year-old man was arrested on charges of criminal damage to endanger life, theft, criminal damage, and other road-related offenses. While no motive behind the crime has been provided at the time of this recording, police say that the victim and the suspect know each other. Police are currently asking for anyone who witnessed the bizarre crime to come forward with any information they might have. Authorities on Queensland's Fraser Coast say that they were totally shocked by an irresponsible traffic incident this week after a man was caught transporting his bicycle in a unique and dangerous way. According to reports, the incident took place around 1 p.m. on November 2nd when officers in the Maryborough Highway Patrol observed the suspect slowing down traffic on a local road. It didn't take long for the officers to discover why. The man was driving down the road in his car while also trying to hold his bike at the same time. The man had achieved this bizarre feat by keeping one of his hands on the steering wheel while sticking his arm out the window to hold the frame of the bicycle with the other. When the man was pulled over and asked why he hadn't put the bicycle in the trunk of his car, he replied, Well, it wouldn't fit, man. The driver was subsequently reprimanded for his dangerous behavior and was issued a traffic citation notice. It's unclear how much he was fined over the incident or what he did with the bicycle after being pulled over. Authorities in China's Hubei province say that they were recently able to arrest a group of thieves behind the serial theft of construction equipment after one of the group's members got sloppy in a pretty amusing way. According to reports, the incident in question took place near the end of October when the suspect, who has not been identified by name, went to a construction site in the city of Xiangyang. Under the cover of darkness, he stole several materials used in the construction of high-voltage transmission towers, which he and his fellow thieves had been selling. However, rather than fleeing the scene once the theft had been committed, the man apparently concluded that he was too tired and decided to call it a night. Once his car was loaded up with the stolen materials, he simply went to sleep inside, without bothering to move it away from where he had parked it near the construction site. The next morning, the man was awoken by patrolling police officers, who allegedly noticed him sleeping in his car next to the construction site and thought that this was unusual. When they asked him to open his trunk, they immediately arrested him after finding the stolen materials. Under further questioning, the man confessed to the crime and told police that he and his accomplices had been stealing the construction materials since September. During that time, they apparently made a profit of about 10,000 yuan or roughly $1,600 US. The man's four other accomplices were also arrested following his confession, and now all five men are awaiting trial. Authorities in Western Australia say that a 24-year-old man is facing numerous charges this week after he threatened to kill staff at a restaurant in the suburb of East Perth when they refused to make him fresh fries. According to reports, the incident took place late on the night of November 12th at a local shop on Bennett Street that's known for its fish and chips. The man asked for fries, but was refused service and told that the kitchen had been closed since 9 p.m. Rather than accept this information and go somewhere else for his late night meal, the man allegedly became irate and threatened to kill several employees unless they got to work on his order. To show that he was serious about the threat, the man reportedly revealed to staff members that he was carrying more than one knife. Fearing for their safety, some employees made the 24-year-old man his fries, while others contacted police. Officers arrived several minutes later and found the man still waiting for his order. He was immediately taken into custody. 
The man has since been refused bail and now faces several charges, including threatening to kill, being armed in a way that may cause fear, and failing to comply with a request to give police personal details. He was reportedly not charged with armed robbery because he paid for the fries. Representatives from Japan's Hyogo Prefectural Police say that a 55-year-old man was recently arrested after he was caught engaging in disturbing stalking behavior that bizarrely involved a woman's bank account. According to reports, the incident began when the 55-year-old first met his 39-year-old victim at the restaurant where she worked sometime in October. Though it's not clear how, the man discovered some limited details about the woman's bank account, enough that he was able to send her electronic money transfers afterwards. Authorities allege that between October 11th and 29th, the man repeatedly sent the woman e-transfers, usually in the amount of one yen, or slightly less than one US cent, making use of the limited space available in the description field to send the woman messages. The transfers reportedly included messages such as, let's chat, and pay me back. At least a dozen of these e-transfers were sent to the 39-year-old in total. Though the woman ignored the messages, this only caused the man to escalate his behavior, and after a couple of weeks, he began showing up outside of her home. It was at that point that the woman reported the 55-year-old to police, and he was arrested on November 4th. During questioning, the man admitted to what he had done, saying that he stalked the woman because he liked her. The man is now facing charges under Japan's Anti-Stalking Act, and he reportedly remains in custody. Police believe that this is the first recorded case of a person being stalked through their bank account in the country. Authorities in Taiwan's Nantou County say that a man's unbelievable laziness recently earned him a stern warning from police after he was allegedly caught repeatedly using ambulances as a free taxi service. According to reports, the man, identified only by the last name Wang, lives right next to a hospital and has frequently been calling ambulances and faking sickness to avoid walking home from the local supermarket. Astonishingly, it's said that the supermarket is a mere 200 meters from Wang's residence. Over the last year, it's estimated that Wang did this a whopping 39 times, simply because he didn't feel like walking. The hospital recently uncovered Wang's scheme when they noticed that after being brought to the hospital, he always left before speaking to doctors or receiving treatment. It was at that point that they contacted the police. According to local media reports, Wang did not take kindly to having his scam uncovered and verbally harassed police officers when they came to speak to him about what he had been doing. Though at the current time it appears that Wang is not facing any consequences for his actions, police warned him that if he's caught abusing the ambulance system again, he'll be facing a large fine as well as other possible charges. Authorities in the city of Brasilia say that a local civil police officer has been arrested yet again this week for a series of offenses related to stalking an ex-boyfriend. According to reports, at sunrise on Sunday, November 28th, 40-year-old Rafaela Ferreira traveled to her ex-boyfriend's home in the city's Northwing neighborhood and began to puncture the tires on two of his cars with a knife. When the man noticed what was happening, he quickly ran outside and was able to knock Rafaela to the ground. But not before, she managed to stab him twice with the knife and bite him on the chest. When police arrived at the scene and arrested Rafaela, she claimed that she was simply passing through the area that morning as she often did, and that her ex-boyfriend had been the one that had attacked her. She also claimed that the knife was his and that she had no idea how the car tires had been punctured. Though Rafaela was released after questioning, it didn't take long for police to pursue charges against her and obtain a warrant for her arrest. Given her track record, it wasn't hard to understand why. At the time that the November 28th incident took place, Rafaela's ex already had a restriction order against her, preventing her from approaching him. 
In fact, she had already been arrested three times prior for other crimes committed against previous ex-boyfriends. In one complaint filed against Rafaela in 2018, an ex-boyfriend claimed that she had called him 98 times in a single day. They had met through a dating app and had only been out a few times. Though ironically, the man ended the relationship because he felt threatened by her behavior, that was when the real harassment started. During another phone conversation, Rafaela reportedly told the man that he didn't know who he was dealing with and that he was playing with fire. She also made threats directed towards his relatives, saying things such as, you have an elderly father and mother, they live alone, and you have a sister and nephew, so stop being an idiot. During the course of an investigation into Rafaela's alleged stalking of another ex-boyfriend, police reportedly recovered a diary from her home in which she seemed to threaten multiple men, writing, I'm going to pay as many killers as it takes to end their lives. When a warrant was obtained this week for Rafaela's arrest, she initially refused to turn herself in to investigators. She was arrested on December 1st after agreeing to go into custody in the presence of a lawyer and is now being held for an indefinite period of preventative detention for violating the restrictive measure her ex-boyfriend had against her. At the time of this recording, Rafaela has not yet been fired from the police force and is currently on sick leave. Authorities in China's Hebei province say that a live streamer has been arrested this week after she allegedly carried out a sick stunt in order to attract more followers. According to reports, the incident took place on November 30th when the unidentified streamer told her viewers that she would broadcast herself taking her own life by jumping into the Hutuo River in the city of Shijiazhuang. The live stream quickly attracted the attention of roughly 1,100 viewers, most of whom desperately messaged her in an attempt to persuade her not to go through with the attempt on her own life. What the concerned viewers didn't know, however, was that the woman never had any intention of delivering on her disturbing claims. Instead, she had planned the live stream from the beginning to be a stunt to attract more followers. When the woman had achieved what she set out to do, she simply ended the hour-long stream and went on her way. Unfortunately for the woman, her viewers weren't the only ones who took her threat seriously. The police were soon contacted, and they were not exactly pleased to find out the whole thing had been done for publicity. The woman was subsequently arrested on suspicion of disrupting public order. At the time of this recording, it appears that she remains in police custody. Government officials in Colombia say that they plan to bring charges against two German citizens after the pair were caught attempting to smuggle hundreds of arachnids and insects back home with them last week. According to reports, the illegal haul of creepy crawlies was discovered on December 2nd at the El Dorado International Airport in Bogota. After suspicious cargo was flagged in the suspect's luggage, a search of their suitcases was conducted, revealing 210 plastic containers that were housing the creatures. In all, it's said that 309 arachnids and insects were recovered, which included more than 200 tarantulas, 67 giant cockroaches, some unidentified spider eggs, and at least one scorpion. Though the two suspects claimed that they were transporting the creatures for academic purposes, investigators say that they had no permissions or permits to back up their story. Officials believe the animals were collected in the municipality of San Luis de Gaisano, in the department of Boyaca. It's said that the arachnids and insects have now been taken to a holding center for illegally displaced wildlife, where they will be assessed before hopefully being reintroduced to their natural habitats. While authorities have said that they plan to bring charges against the German citizens, at the time of this recording, they have not yet announced what those charges might be. This week, Authorities in Thailand announced that they had arrested a pair of suspected kidnappers who were allegedly caught after they posted evidence of their crime to the social media platform TikTok. According to reports, the incident began in July of this year when a man and his girlfriend, identified only by the last names of Zaw and Mai, kidnapped the female victim in the province of Patum Thani. Apparently, Zaw and Mai are both Burmese nationals, 
and the victim is said to be a popular social media influencer who is also from Myanmar. After abducting the unidentified victim, Za and Mai allegedly held her at a residence in Klongwang district, where her ankles were bound with chains and her wrists were bound with ropes. Though it's unclear what the couple initially planned to do with the victim, thankfully it appears that they didn't get that chance. Shortly after kidnapping the woman, they made the bizarre choice to film a video of her and post it on TikTok. Apparently, the video also gave away their own identities. When the video was uploaded, a user in Thailand noticed it and told the couple to let the victim go, while also reporting the incident to police. Zaw and Mai subsequently freed the captive woman, who immediately went to authorities herself and showed them the TikTok video as evidence of the crime that had been committed against her. After fleeing the area, Zaw and Mai were eventually tracked down to a residence in Bangkok, where they were arrested. At the current time, it remains unclear if Zaw and Mai are going to be prosecuted for their crime in Thailand, or they will instead be deported to Myanmar. Authorities in London, England say that the high-rolling dreams of two career criminals are officially over this week after they were both convicted of fraud in connection with £4 million worth of scratch card winnings. According to reports, back in April of 2019, 34-year-old John Ross Watson and 38-year-old Mark Goodrum thought that they had hit the big time when they purchased five scratch cards from a supermarket in London's Clapham area, one of which turned out to be the winner of the £4 million grand prize. However, there was just one problem. Though the scratch ticket was indeed genuine, the debit card the men had used to purchase it was stolen. Authorities first became suspicious when the men phoned up lottery officials, advising that they had won the grand prize. When officials asked for the men's banking information to directly deposit the money, they replied that they didn't have an account. This didn't seem to be possible, since the men had purchased the scratch ticket using a debit card, meaning the money must have been from someone's bank account. It turned out that that someone was a man named Joshua Adaman, who did not know either Watson or Goodrum. Somehow, the men had obtained Adaman's debit card info and PIN number, and Goodrum had written them down on his hand. They had then used the debit card details to make purchases at two different stores, their purchases totaling £161. When lottery officials announced that they were going to withhold the Goodrum and Watson winnings proceeding in an investigation, the men went directly to the media to claim that they were being unfairly treated. They claimed that they had permission to use the debit card, and even went so far as to try and take the lottery company to court. At that time, it was reported that Goodrum and Watson also went on a four-day bender after learning that their scratch card had been a grand prize winner. An investigation ultimately revealed that Goodrum and Watson were lying, and each of the men were charged and convicted of three counts of fraud. This week, they were sentenced to 18 months in prison for their crimes. Authorities in Italy say that a 47-year-old Bulgarian man has been arrested this week after he was accused of pulling the emergency brake on dozens of trains throughout the country. According to reports, the 47-year-old, who has not been identified by name, would get on trains in the regions of Liguria, Piedmont, and Lombardy, wait until they picked up speed, and then when they went through tunnels, would pull the emergency brake. After that, he would try to blend in with other passengers to avoid being identified. Police say that he did this nearly a hundred times. The man was finally caught this week after being identified thanks to surveillance footage and witness accounts from train conductors. He was arrested after pulling the emergency brake on a train bound for Genoa and is now facing charges of interrupting a public service and resisting a public official. Apparently, trains aren't the only place where the 47-year-old has been a nuisance. Last spring, he apparently forced a plane to turn around after it had taken off in Bergamo. The man was apparently drunk, and when he couldn't find an emergency brake on the plane, began to yell, causing the pilot to turn the plane around. Authorities in the English county of Dorset say that a 71-year-old man is facing an unlimited fine this week after he was found guilty of killing a protected tree because it got in the way of a lucrative land deal. According to reports, the case began in 2015 when former chartered accountant Robert Page was negotiating a deal to sell his 900,000 pound home in the town of Poole. The plan was for Page to sell the property to a developer 
who would then demolish Page's large detached home in order to build a block of luxury apartments. If the deal went through, Page stood to make at least a hundred thousand pounds off of the sale. However, things soon went sideways when Page learned that the planning permissions for the new property had been refused due to a 65-foot-tall mature Monterey pine that was protected by a tree preservation order and was not allowed to be cut down. The 71-year-old tried again in 2016 to have the tree removed by arguing that it could fall over and was a danger, but this was also refused. A short time later, the tree suddenly got very sick and fell over. However, officials didn't buy that this was a coincidence. Sure enough, when they investigated the situation, they found that herbicide had been injected into holes that had been drilled into the trunk of the tree, and concrete had been poured at its base to cut off oxygen to the plant. Page was subsequently charged with breaching a tree preservation order with intent to destroy the tree, though he continued to deny what he had done, offering the very lame defense that some other unknown person must have snuck onto his property multiple times and committed the crime. Page was found guilty this week and is now facing an unlimited fine, as well as repaying the cost of legal fees associated with his trial. His sentencing is scheduled for later this month. That brings us to the end of this edition of Crimes of the Week International. If you're a fan of the new series, don't forget to tell us in the comment section below. While you're there, make sure to subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching.